Okay, so, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to start a few minutes earlier because then I can have a few minutes extra to talk. Um, <coughs> oh. Yeah, so it recorded me now zipping up my fly and every or buttoning my fly also and everything. Uh, in any case, um, my slides are, uh, it's a website and it doesn't seem to be rendering very nicely on 460. Um, so I'm sorry if, if it doesn't, uh, if the slides don't really appear nicely, uh, if everything, if it flows over, they're not that important, the slides. So uh, in any case, let's start. So thank you everybody for coming. Um, my name is JC, and uh, I'm going to talk about Converse or Converse JS, which is a XMPP chat client written in JavaScript. And uh, two years ago was the first time uh, I talked about this project at FOSDEM, where I went a little bit into technical details about XMPP, how it works, and uh, Converse as well talking about what plans we have for the future, what we're going to do. And now, two years later, quite a lot has happened. And I would like to share with you what we've done, what we've achieved in the community and in the project. And <coughs> excuse me, I would also like to uh, share a vision with you uh, <coughs> to also kind of explain why we're working on this project. And I think uh, this, this vision is not my vision. It's a vision that many people in this room share, that many people who have been giving talks here share, and that people have had before us as well. And I think this vision is all the more pertinent today because of the state of instant messaging that we have today. We have uh, dozens of chat applications that don't interoperate. Um, we have proprietary silos and walled gardens with locked in users who have their communications and metadata recorded, monetized, and uh, locked in as well. So, how useful would email have been if you could only send an email from a Gmail account to another Gmail account? or from a proton mail account to a proton mail account. In a situation like that, usually what happens is some player in the market becomes entrenched, uh, the network effect takes hold and they dominate and they push out everybody else and they make it impossible <coughs> or almost impossible for people to compete or to provide alternative solutions. And so proton mail, for example, came up recently, as far as I know, and they have, you can use them and they are very, um, they're usable because you can send an email to anybody in the network or you can host your own email address. Sorry, email, yeah, email address and email server and still communicate to other people. So this interoperability between providers via the protocol is called federation and there's no technical reason why we cannot have federation with chat apps or with instant messaging apps. XMPP, which is this year 20 years old, uh, was built with federation in mind from the start. And it supports federation, and it's an IETF standard. So the, many of the instant messaging apps that are built today don't use XMPP, and they don't federate. But generally, this is not because of technical reasons. It's mostly because you won't get a billion-dollar valuation for your chat app company if you build it on standards, federate with other people, and allow other people the freedom to build their own front ends and to interoperate with you on a standard basis. So um, us, we as free software hackers, uh, are we going to have to build these things ourselves? And uh, email as well me, is a very good example because the companies that nowadays provide email and federate, they don't do this because they love federation. They would love to be able to lock everything down and keep it within their silo. And this is many companies are also doing this. They're, they're trying their best to kind of break email, break the federation. And with, uh, 
with instant messaging, my vision, therefore, and the vision that many others share, is of federated, secure, end-to-end -end encrypted communication that supports the four freedoms of free software and that uh, enables you as user the freedom to use it as you see fit, share it, use the code, see the code, share the code, modify the code. So, oh. Converse.js is the project that I'm working on, and this is my way of participating in the vision, but it's not the only way. And there are also other people who are doing things. Many of the people who are here or who are talking here are sharing in this vision and participating in their way. It's a web chat, so it's available at converse.js.org. Uh, where you can try it out. There's demos there, and it's basically usable on its own. Uh, but it can also be integrated into a website. That's how it was originally uh, came about. It was built for uh, I'm a web developer, and this was built for a client of ours. And eventually, it was extracted out and made its own project. It has a plugin architecture, so you can uh, extend its functionality by writing plugins. But you can also reduce its functionality by removing plugins because the entire code base is, is built out of plugins, modularized, modularized, except for the single common core. It has 131 contributors to date, uh, including translators. And most of these people um, joined the community and made their first contributions in the last year or maybe last two years. It uh, has different view modes. And this uh, is best described with, a, with an image. So this is a screenshot of the, let's say, first view mode, because this is the original view mode. And uh, it's called overlay, the overlaid view mode, because you have chats overlaid on top of an existing website. So this is a relatively common UX paradigm that you see with um, Gtalk, at least in the old days. Uh, LinkedIn still has a, lots of uh, support chats nowadays. They still have this kind of thing where you have little chats. You can minimize them as they're in the bottom, close them. And the idea being that behind it, you can still have a website with a document or some other stuff there. Then there's the uh, full screen view mode, where it's basically more used as a um, standalone chat application in its own right, not necessarily integrating it into a website. And uh, this, many people are familiar with this, at least this kind of UX paradigm of like a full screen chat app, which was made especially popular by Slack and very similar chat apps nowadays like that. And this was promised two years ago at FOSDEM when I talked about it, saying oh, we're working on this and now it's available and can be used uh, especially for team chat kind of applications and group collaboration. And then another view mode is embedded, where you can uh, take a specific conversation, chat, and embed it into an existing web page. You just basically provided the DOM element, some kind of uh, like a, an ID, for example, and it will inject the chat app inside there. And these view modes are just configuration. So it's all the same code. It's not different code that you're deploying to have a different view mode. You, it's just a configuration setting that you change. And at the moment, if you change the configuration setting, you have to reload the page to have the new view mode. But probably in the future, we'll be able to kind of change on the fly between the different view modes. Obviously, changing from full screen, we have multiple chats open to this. We have only one chat open. Uh, gets a bit tricky, but could be doable. I mean, it might confuse people if you do that, so you have to kind of figure out whether it makes sense in your case to do context switching on the fly. But switching between the overlaid and the full screen could make sense. So <coughs> why this project when there are so many other chat apps and there are also other ones that federate and there are also yeah, desktop apps and mobile apps? Well. It's for me mostly about the combination of all these things. It's free software, so it provides you with the free 
the, the, the four freedoms uh, to use, study, share, and improve the code. It's standard space because it's based on XMPP, which is an IETF uh, standard. It supports federation due to it being an XMPP client. It's customizable due to it being JavaScript, CSM, CSS, and HTML, but also because having a plugin architecture and uh, lots of configuration settings. And it's integratable because you can integrate it into existing web applications. And it's built with that in mind. And I'm not aware of any other uh, web chat clients that actually have all of these things, bring, bring all of this together. So that same year when I gave the FOSDEM talk in 2017, at the end of the year, I wrote a tweet where I was uh, saying that I'm going to spend three months working only on this project. I wanted to... I was frustrated because I felt like there's a lot of potential there, but I was being um, held back in a sense by not having enough time to spend on it. And so I kind of made a decision that I want to really prioritize spending time on this. And I first initially said three months, and let's see what happens from that. But actually, then it turned out into a whole year. And the whole year of 2018, I was working on this project. And... Um, I did do. I, I didn't need to also do paid work, but I generally then declined paid work that wasn't related to Converse.js, and all the almost all the paid work that I did was either helping people integrate it, customize it, extend it, add features. I also asked for um, donations, which was a weird experience, and I had mixed emotions about it, but. Um, in, the, in hindsight, it was a good thing, I think, and it, donations have steadily grown over time, and they do definitely help keeping the project, uh, like supporting the project. And I was able to uh, live the whole year, feed a family of three uh, with one income, just working on this project, and I think it was a success, and there was also <clears throat> other results due to that. Uh, we were able to make very regular releases that were not always possible when I was working full-time on other stuff. We uh, added lots of features, not just me, but other people in the community contributed as well. Many new deployments. Um, Dele is going to talk about, uh, after me, about using Converse in a, in a project that he's uh, working on. And uh, it's been deployed at mailbox.org, which is a German email client, and being integrated in all kinds of environments. Got new sponsors, and we had really good growth in the community with contributions, people hanging out in the chat rooms, and just people using it, setting up little instances for their friends and family. And I also see this project, I see very much as part of an ecosystem. I'm not trying to dominate or anything. Like, this is just a web chat, and there's other people working on Android and iOS and desktop and all kinds of stuff, c command line interfaces and so on. And this is just like a piece of the puzzle. Uh, so some of the features that were added, uh, we added in, the, this is all in the last year. Um, and not all, not all of it me. Um, the full screen view mode was finished. So specifically used for team chat kind of applications. Uh, updated the UI. This That work was actually quite a lot and it was sponsored uh, by the Wikisuite project, Omimo encryption, single and private chats. So we have now end-to-end uh, -end encryption for group chats and for private chats. File sharing, message receipts, message corrections, uh, theming support, spoiler messages on Mastodon, they're called content warnings. And we have a headless build. And the headless build kind of comes back to the con uh, topic of customizability and integratability. Um, the headless build is basically we split the project out to all the non-UI code and the, like we split the UI code off so that you can create a build of the chat app that has all the, f all the functionality without the UI and it exposes an API and on top of that you can basically build your own UI in your own library, your own JavaScript framework or whatever, maybe React Native or something even and you don't have to use the UI as it is. Uh, so 
If you don't like the UI, build your own. If you don't like the colors, make your own. Not everybody likes the orange, but I like it. It's a happy, friendly color. Uh, we also had, not particularly related to Converse, but I kind of feel like I want to mention it. And um, Max is also going to talk about that at 4 o'clock, I think. Um, London and Karlsruhe, I put on the list because they were kind of sprints, but we weren't really officially yet. They weren't yet official, but put it that way. But um, some of us got together in London, specifically Wikisuite people, but also XMPP people, and we worked together, and we were like, wait, this is really cool. We, we enjoy it. We should do this again sometime. And then some other uh, people of us came together at Karlsruhe at a CCC event, and we again we were like hacking on XMPP, and every time I'm there, I'm working on Converse, and we're like, yeah, we really like this. We should really kind of do this more often. And then Max basically at um, Cambridge, he really organized the first proper official XMPP sprint. Well, official, there's nothing official about it except that it was really well organized. And from there on, it kind of took off. Last one was in Brussels just last week. And this was also a really interesting one because we uh, got all kinds of client developers together and one or two server developers to talk about creating a unified experience across different projects. Because this is one of the things that people complain about with XMPP, that you, different terminology and you, concepts of the protocol are exposed in different ways in different clients. So we want to create something where there's a bit more conformity with how the chat applications behave so that people are not unpleasantly surprised when they switch from one device to another device or one app to another app. Where are we now? So it's a funny thing with um, open source projects where, or free, pro free software projects where people look at it and then they're like, okay, it's rough around the edges or this thing is missing or that thing is missing. And then they kind of just, they don't, they, they, they dismiss it. And then two years later, they might still be saying like, oh yeah, you know, it doesn't have that, doesn't have that. And actually in those two years, a lot has happened. And I, these software projects there or communities, they're like a living entity that's all the time growing and evolving as long as at least people put energy into it. And it's the same with XMPP and it's the same with Converse. Like XMPP is extensible, so constantly people are adding to the protocol, extending it to do things that people are nowadays more and more uh, demanding or desiring from chat applications. And it's the same with Converse. It's used commercially. Um, very often integrated into people's websites for various different use cases. Lots of people also just host it themselves for their friends and families or for their communities. There's commercial demand. I mean, last year I was working only in this project, and uh, I still regularly get emails uh, for people asking for help. And at the moment, um, there's more commercial demand for development on this project than there are developers available to actually meet the demand. So that's actually a good thing. Uh, it shows also that there's growth. And uh, therefore, I would like to extend a call to action. I've explained the vision that many of us have. I'm sure many of you agree. If you're interested, you don't have to participate in this project. There's many others. But since I'm talking about this one, I might as well ask. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, join a sprint. The next sprint is in Berlin, uh, somewhere in April. Sorry, I don't know exactly when. 29th of March. 29th of March. Yeah. Thank you. And there's going to be one probably in, in Paris, maybe sometime. And I will probably organize one in Dusseldorf again at the end of the year, maybe in, I don't know, October or so. Um, but we will have quite a few more sprints. There will be opportunities to come and join. And this is nice because you can meet people, knowledge transfer. We're all friendly people, and we like to work together. And we can, yeah. Uh, the other things you can do at a sprint. You can fix bugs. You can write documentation, develop features, translate it. And other people are willing to sit with you and work together on something. And this is very useful for learning how to get involved if you um, uh, if you want to get involved. This project, as many other free software projects, uh, has a, a need and a lack of people who are really good with UI and UX. Um, and if anybody has an interest in that kind of stuff, and yeah, 
that would also be greatly appreciated. And we have a chat room, XBP chat room, discussed at conference.conversejs.org. If you go to conversejs.org, the website, and you click on full screen, and you have an account, or you can register your account very quickly, in two minutes, maybe 30 seconds, uh, it will, I think if you register on conversejs.org, it will um, tell you to go there, and then you can very easily, through the UI, just join that, that chat room, or open it up in your favorite client. And yeah, ask us questions. Uh, we're friendly, and I'm going to be in this room for daily's talk. Afterwards, I'm, I have to leave at about 4 o'clock, I think, today, but um, actually earlier, 3.30. Uh, I might be uh, afterwards in the, in the hallway or so if someone wants to talk. Otherwise, reach out with, to the chat room, or here are my other contact details, email and XMPP. I really like the Fediverse. You know, I'm, I'm on Mastodon. Uh, Twitter, I'm almost kind of thinking about ditching Twitter, but I'm still there. So thanks for listening. Hi there. Uh, magic. Ah, it's for the recording. <laughs> uh, thank you for the talk. Um, you mentioned about um, contributions about design, uh, UX, and UI. What kind of uh, contributions do you need? Um, yeah, so the question is, oh, well, you did actually talk into the mic, but yeah. The question is, what kind of UX, UI contributions are needed? And um, it's almost like uh, we don't know what we need because we don't have the expertise to be able to say what we need, right? It's, what is this thing, uh, this paradox? Uh, so uh, I know a lot of people tell me it, it doesn't look that great, like compared to other um, applications, especially the commercial ones. Like it just, yeah, it doesn't look that polished. And uh, we try our best, but we're just, the people who are involved at the moment, are not, no one's really like a full-time designer or UX expert or so on. So it could be just advice. It could be mock-ups. It could be helping with the CSS. It's, yeah, it's difficult to say what exactly. Yeah. Uh, one, one question from my end. How many external dependencies have you got? How many de external dependencies there are in Converse.js, if any? And is it uh, possible or easy to, for instance, host all of them in one place so that you don't access external JavaScript from your page where you use Convert.js? Yes. Uh, we build, uh, so the question is how many external dependencies are there and is it possible to host all of it yourself? It's 100% possible to host all of it yourself. It's in the end one JavaScript file and one CSS mm -hmm. file and some font files for fonts. Uh, and the, it does have external dependencies, but they all get built uh, into one file. That file is about 1.2 megabytes. You could probably split it up, chunk it or so on, but at the moment we don't do that. Uh, the CSS is about 200 kilobytes or so. Um, but that's the whole application with all the CSS, uh, with all the HTML that kind of gets rendered also included in there. The um, dependencies are, it's built on Strophe, which is a, uh, that's the library that sets up the XMPP connection and does the stanza uh, parsing and not parsing, but the stanza forwarding and uh, sending and receiving. And um, the framework is Backbone. And that's a little bit because of the, the this project is already started in 2013, 12, 13, which when Backbone was kind of in its heyday. Nowadays, people are using other stuff, but I prefer to evolve something rather than rewrite. And I think it's uh, paid off. Um, so uh, I'm quite happy with Backbone. It's quite a minimal, small library with low overhead. Um, coming with that is Lodash, which is a utility library. There's a few other things. It has a fair amount of dependencies, but we're also trying to keep it as small as possible. Probably with Webpack, we can do some more um, tree shaking and to, to kind of make the build smaller and so on. Um, but I don't think you can get away with not having dependencies. And uh, it is definitely meant to be self-hosted, especially the end-to-end -end encrypted stuff. 
uh, a lot of the security properties break down when you rely on someone else to host stuff for you when you have into encryption because they can in any time just uh, ho uh, serve new JavaScript for you that that is malicious. Uh, yeah. One last question here. Uh, that um, it's a little bit related to that issue. Um, I would have a little bit problems to just put my GID and password in some web page. Uh, I know that uh, Converse uses this only locally in my browser, but as an end user, I cannot see the difference. So that my password is not uh, passed on to the server. So is there any way of uh, knowing, oh, this Converse is really the real one and would not pass my password to somebody else, yeah, so uh, signing or whatever? Yeah. Uh, so, um, one thing you can do is, is to self-host it, and therefore you have full control over it. Another thing you can do, we like. There's been a lot of talk in the community about creating some kind of. Um, a lot of people don't like it, but the idea of something like an Electron app, or um, a few years ago, I integrated into something called a Chromium Embedded Framework, which is a similar kind of thing where you can create a desktop app with based on the browser. Um, Electron has signed. Uh, releases, so you can uh, you have a bit more control there o over um, what gets deployed, and um, other than that, it generally yeah, the, it is an issue of trust. Uh, unless you do these, make these steps to host it yourself or to use some kind of desktop application, which uh, at the moment we're not there yet to have an Electron app. Um, to putting it. Yeah, this, that's mostly what I can say about it. The, it, it is not possible to, ha to verify downloads or to have signed downloads within a browser without some kind of extension or without something like Electron. And uh, that is something that people should keep in mind, like depending on how they want to use it.